Hi everyone, Andrew Boylan here, and I am going to sit down and read the Gospel of Luke with you. So I hope you guys uh, enjoy this, and please join me every night from December 1st tonight until Christmas Eve, December 24th. There are 24 chapters in the Gospel of Luke. We're going to read one chapter each and every night. You can sit back and listen to me read, or you can grab your Bible and follow along. So we're going to start with to celebrate the season of Advent, and also... Uh, why we really celebrate Christmas. We're going to read the Gospel of Luke. So, um, yeah, here we go. So this is chapter one. Okay. Introduction. Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theoph Theophilius, I believe, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. The birth of John the Baptist foretold. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless, because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty, and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by, by Lot." according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time of the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then, the, then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked an angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you, to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. The birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged, be, pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words 
and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you, will, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come to you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Luke chapter 137 for no word from God will ever fail. Remember that one. That's a good one. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Mary visits Elizabeth. At the time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Mary's song. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. That one speaks to me big time. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. The birth of John the Baptist. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy, and they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, There is no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, His name is John. Immediately, his mouth was opened and his tongue set free, and he began to speak, praising God. All the neighbors were filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, When then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. Zechariah's Song His father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit, and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets long ago. Salvation from our enemies and from the hand 
of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation, through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in dark and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. And the child grew and became strong in the spirit, and he lived in the wilderness until he appeared publicly to Israel. Now, okay, so that's chapter one. And I have just seen the Messengers episode of The Chosen, and I just did a review about that. And that has Mary's song in it. There's a scene in that special, uh, to any of you who haven't seen it, uh, there's a moment where Mary is telling Mary Magdalene to give this to Luke because this has to be in what he's writing down. Well, there it is. I just read it. And that's Mary's song. My soul glorifies you. It starts with that. And so I really... I really like how this starts out. I really do, because it tells you what is to happen. And the reason why I decided, of all, of all, of all the books to read in the Bible, especially the New Testament, why the Gospel of Luke? Well, for those who may or may not know, the Gospel of Luke is the only one of the four Gospels that talks about Jesus' birth. Okay? So, since we're celebrating Christmas here... This is a perfect opportunity to read each chapter, since there are 24 chapters in the Gospel of Luke, one chapter every night leading up to Christmas Day, which is the person that Christmas is all about, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And so I saw this proposal online last year, and I really liked it. And I did it last year. I had my Advent wreath every Sunday, new week in Advent, I would light it, and I had a lot of fun doing it, and I'd like to do it again, but this time I want to share it with you guys, because I think it's a really nice little Christmas tradition, especially when it comes to celebrating the season of Advent. So, even though I would have loved to have loved to uh, lit the candle tonight, unfortunately the time I'm recording this, it is Friday, December 1st, 2023. It is not the first Sunday of Advent yet, not for another two more days. And it's funny because the fourth Sunday of Advent drops on Christmas Eve, the 24th. So we will not have all four candles lit until Christmas Eve. And we all love Christmas Eve, don't we? <laughs> but the reason why I'm doing this is that I hope maybe it'll encourage you to want to read the scriptures. I love reading this. It brings me so much joy. Even when I have a hard day, it lifts my spirits, and I hope it does yours too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and tune in tomorrow night for Chapter 2. God bless.